What is up down and sideways, you beautiful individuals? We are back. It's Lee Gunlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people for a little bit of a weekend recap. We got not one, not two, not three. We got, I think, six or seven different teams that all qualified for the 2023 World Championship over the weekend. Of course, we start with the best region of those to talk about. That is the LCK. We had the fourth seed being decided. D-plus versus Hanwha Life. Thankfully, as everyone expected, there was no DRX miracle run. This marquee matchup, only one or two, I guess, of the DRX defending champs can get through. And it is deft and D-plus getting it done on the day. Oh, baby, D plus Kia locked and loaded as that last team heading to Worlds for the LCK after quite a very convincing dispatching of Hanwha Life in this finals for the gauntlet. Deft will be returning one more time. One more final dance. Is this going to be it? Is he How many gonna... final dances can you have? Apparently more than one, but it doesn't matter because we get Deft back at Worlds. I'm willing to stretch the boundaries on that one. D plus Kia heading to, to this event. And I think it's not just about, of course, Deft and talking about that. The big thing in this series that I saw from this team that I am excited about heading towards Worlds is the performance of Showmaker. We have kept track to this multiple times, checking in. How invested is he? How much is he enjoying the game? all these type of things because if that perfect combination matches up you have an absolute beast in the mid lane for your team and that beast was unleashed in this series against Hanwha Life. Yeah go back to the DRX set where he had some fantastic Silas performances he's getting solo kills on Zekka out playing on the Corky it was it was a mid lane gap throughout this entire series and yes it needed four games but really Hanwha Life stole that first game D-plus was the better team in four, all four of these games. Yeah, and it, it is, again, the D-plus Kia really putting themselves head and shoulders above Hanwha Life at this point. I think it's complicated because a lot of people still will have hopes for, for or had hopes for Hanwha Life, given the resurgence and the development since they added Grizzly into that lineup and what that did for them. I think a lot of people might want another kick at the can with this team down the line. But for now, you saw them kind of max out what they were able to get or what type of consistency they could put together out in the rift in these crucial moments. And it wasn't enough to combat against E plus Kia. And yes, it's obvious Grizzly did not have a good series on the day. Uh, was not up to the level we've seen over the last month plus out of him. He was destroyed by Canyon, but his far and away the biggest playoff series he's played in his young career. This guy was thrust into the spotlight in the middle of the split as a rookie, like I mentioned, and the potential is absolutely there. I can't wait to see him playing with the full off season being iterated into a team. Don't don't be flaming this rookie for not having a great series. There's there's definitely a high ceiling for this guy. I've been really encouraged to see at least this year or maybe in a little bit of a trend as well in the past couple for the LCK to be so willing to promote this young talent and put them into these spots, even if it is a roster like this with Hanwha Life, where you have established players, veteran players already in these spots. The next step is, as you said, having that support for these young players after this type of first initial type of debut and saying, yes, some areas to improve, improve some things to clean up, but we are happy with what's going on here and you are on a good track. Someone like Grizzly getting a little bit of support as well from his teammate Viper saying something like that at the press conference. That is a good sign for the team. Obviously, a bit tragic. We won't be seeing Viper at the World Championship. No reunion with Tarzan and some of these other Griffin boys. But still, full credit to D+. We're getting Deft going with his sixth different team to World. Samsung Blue, EDG, KT Roaster, DRX twice, Hanwha Life, and now D plus for yes his last last final perhaps maybe dance but really let's highlight his partner in the bot lane in this series because Kellen who we've seen split time with Bible as that starting support probably the best series he's had since the spring split. 
Oh, yes, sir. It was a big series for Kellen, and this is one that I've been waiting on to see from him throughout the course of this year. You mentioned even splitting some time with Bible at one point. You know, and one of the reasons you bring in Bible is the way that he was able to make these engages and the communication and confidence that he had with it. I think your boy Kellen was picking up a little bit of that from the sidelines because he certainly steps back in to the scene with this team, and you can feel it, the way that he is playing, the way that this support is helping out this team, that confidence level has to be high. And, you know, now we look at this D-plus roster going into Worlds as the lowest seed in the LCK. By the way, third straight split, uh, Deft is going as that fourth seed, which is crazy to always be <laughs> running through the gauntlet to get there, but... I feel like it's more the same for a D plus that we talked about all year. If they play to that upper level that we've seen them reach, this is a team that can still make a run, a deep run at the world championship. But are we going to get the consistency out of them? Because we still, I mean, back to back series against a weak DRX and then a good Hanwa is about the longest stretch of consistency we've seen out of them. I think it's going to be about managing the expectation for a squad like D plus Kia, where we're still being very positive, very hopeful for them at this time, you still got to check yourself against the rest of this world's roster that we know is locked in. And for D plus Kia, you're looking at a lot of the kind of lower mid-range teams and you're saying, absolutely, you are. If you are consistent and on your point, you are a squad that should be dominating, being a threat at that type of tier. The problem is when you then step up to the Gen Gs, to the JDGs, to the BLGs, those type of teams, Maybe even throwing an LNG at that type of point. Those type of squads, I feel that is where you start to hit your limit. If you are this D-plus Kia, you might have to have a couple breaks. Go your way at that point. But if you, hey, you've got your ticket to the dance, you're looking pretty good, and if you keep improving, you're going to get yourself to those all-important moments against these top-level squads in the world where, hey, you got your opportunity to prove myself and everybody else wrong that you are up to the task of the very best of the best. And yeah, the problem is when you start listing these top three teams from the other regions, uh, you're running out of these top eight spots real quick for a squad like D+. So that wraps up the summer split in the LCK. Obviously, we still have the Asian Games just under a month away, but they're already doing poses. They're already doing photo shoots. And I think the most interesting thing to look at now over this next month for Team Korea and Team China, especially going to the Asian Games, is how are scrims going to work? Are you going to have this mash of Gen G, uh, JDG, and T1 scrimming together against the squad like KT Rolster? Or are they just going to be scrimming Team China's roster for the Asian Games? It's going to be a little messy. Crazy question to think about with it because it's one of those ones where what route is it going down? Is it all hands on deck? This is for Korea. We got to get it done type of thing to challenge the defending champions in China in this League of Legends uh, you know, section of the Asian Games. Is it all hands on deck for Korea? We got to make all these preparations. Scrim books, secrets, they're all out the window. We're all working together on this one. Or is it maybe, hey, Worlds is around the corner. We got to keep a couple things close to our chest here and keep our preparations like this. We can't be going the full scrim run, giving you access to these type of opportunities, these players, these times, even if you are for Korea. No idea exactly how that's split out, but the way that this press conference, the way that they're talking about it and hyping it up, you better believe we're going to find out sooner rather than later. I, there's no way, if you're an organization, if you're Gen G, T1, JDG, you don't care as much about the Asian Games as you do World, surely, for what that does for your organization and your brand. Because, you know, guys like Toby Faker, they're representing Korea less so than they're representing their team. So, yeah, I could easily see these teams be like, no, 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 we're not scrimming our potential competition for Worlds. You, Team Korea, Team China, you guys scrim each other back and forth nonstop and you'll sprinkle in some of those other smaller regions, which might not do too much for you in terms of practice. No, but I'm sure, I'm sure that some players like Chovy, like Faker maybe, are kind of leaning over to maybe Arnold or maybe Mr. Joe Marsh and giving, giving him a nudge and saying, oh, you know what, maybe I'd like a little scrimbach against ourselves, even if I'm working with Team Korea, to, to swing things around and sweeten the pot could be it. This is going to be juicy, folks. This is only getting started now, kind of covering a little bit more, but if they are ready doing press conference and photo shoots for this, and we're still a month out, 
you better believe we are going to get hyped up some more stories and information coming through before it gets underway. It's great because, you know, we're going to be starved for content a little bit as we wait now after summer. I know the LEC is still going, but before we get to World, so Asian Games, a nice little sprinkle in between to keep us satiated. We did have that loser's bracket finally get going over in the LEC. We had, of course, a five-game banger between the rematch of uh, the semifinals from the summer season, Fnatic versus XL, and this one was very competitive. Again, sad that only one team can advance through, but how about elimination back-to-back -back games four and five? Razork pulls out the Talia jungle. We've been seeing it mid every now and then, but haven't seen a jungle in a long time. Have not seen it jungle in a long time, and Mr. Razrick making a very strong case for a lot of other junglers to maybe jump on this Talia train, ride that wall all the way down to bot lane, and pick up some extra kills. Oh boy, Razrick really did make this Talia jungle fit, and it really was this type of pick that changed the complexion for the Fnatic compositions they were rolling through and what was possible for this team. And that idea to bet on yourself as Razrick that hey, I'm taking this champion that not a lot of people are playing around the regions right now, and I'm going to make it work, and this is going to let me facilitate my team and unlock the power of the players that we've got here. Hey, good stuff, Fnatic. This was a hell of a series all the way through. Four and four, four, three and four quarters, whatever type of sliver is left at the very end of it is the only bit that was so dominant for Fnatic when it all came through and it just was the crashing down at the very end. But this was a hell of a series, Excel versus Fnatic. After the abysmal spring and winter out of Fnatic, they, they saved their hides. Redemption is their seventh straight world championship for the organization. I know they could still finish fourth and be ousted in one single best of five, but we're still counting that as going to Worlds because it's played in Korea. So top four um, clinched for them. And I gotta say, Humanoid, this series is one of the few in the last many where I'm talking about him not getting caught out very often, not dying randomly. He just had solid laning, solid team fighting start to finish across five games. Oh, man, I, I got to show this episode to ourselves in the past, and I got to remind myself of this before next year. When you're looking at teams struggling and it not working out and mistakes coming through from some of these players, Razork and Humanoid were major problems at the early points of the year for this Fnatic team. And I think it goes to show that not just is it, you know, you can't look at all these faults and always pinpoint it exactly precisely on the specific players. It always is a combination of the environment and everything else going on. And clearly for Fnatic at the beginning of the year, it wasn't the right atmosphere and attitude for these two players to pop off and provide that angle that has made them establish their names in the LEC in the first place. We see that here throughout this summer split and especially in this big time series against XL. Heartbroken for guys like Odawamne and XL not being able to complete the miracle, but so happy for Trimby who came and saved this fanatic organization and the rest of the boys for going. But it's not all happiness for them because now going forward apparently Oscar Innan was playing with an arm hand injury heading into this series and now he's going to need surgery so he's missing at bare minimum the next series against BDS but who do they got on the bench as a free agent who just finished his Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough Fanatic Wonder subbing in for the next series I don't even know if this dude's played League over the last month I, it doesn't matter, my man. He's been playing Path of Exile, World of War. He's got some of the mechanics. I'm sure it's still there. Wonder stepping back into the black and orange of the Fnatic Faithful. Didn't have this one in the cards. Obviously, I don't think anyone really had any side insider information knowing about the injury for us here until we find out about it. And this is obviously the path that we're going down right now with surgery. And it's one of those ones where estimated that you will be back in this type of time. Of course, that's an estimation, not necessarily anything concrete. And with something like this, you can see dates kind of either pushed back or maybe even moved up a little bit. That is one of those ones where you want to be patient with it. having someone like Wonder available in the free agent pool to step on in. 
that is certainly a good look for the LEC and Fnatic to be able to field uh, a very suitable replacement for Oscar at this crucial time of the year. And obviously, you know, Wonder maybe forgets how things ended with Fnatic when he says, oh, I guess you guys are good now, so we're playing for actual important games. Yeah, I could sub in for those. Hey, it's, it's, you know what? It's Wonder. I think anybody could agree. All the problems, anything that wasn't going right for Fnatic early on, I don't think a lot of people were pointing at Wonder is the guy or the attitude problem, absolutely, with anything going on with Fnatic. I'm fairly certain it's going to be a, a good warm welcome for him back to the black and orange. Yeah, and, you know, I'm expecting 1v3 outplays under turret or uh, I'll be disappointed. <laughs> He's got to find right back into form. Obviously, very tough scenario to all of a sudden be matching up against Adam in some of the biggest series of the entire season. So Fnatic really, or Wonder really getting dropped in. Obviously, now BDS maybe probably going to be favorites in that matchup. And as we alluded to, it's BDS they're matching up against. It's not SK Gaming. We talked about almost six weeks off for SK. How would they look coming onto the Rift? And I'm going to be honest, there was some rust there. There was some mechanical misplays of being dropped right into a do-or-die elimination match after not playing for six weeks. It's got to be tough, and I felt like we saw the effects. You certainly did see those effects uh, for SK Gaming. It's one of those ones that we talk so many times when it is this type of gap between competitive play and exposure to being on stage like that. You can have these type of mistakes come through, this type of rust build on these players in comparison to obviously keeping that momentum, keeping a, a swing of things in routine throughout a season. That is going to be one of those things you look at for the LAC schedule and SK are the victims of that one. Shout out to BDS, though, because what they did in this series, lots of positives going on. Of course, our man in the top side, Mr. Bad Adam, getting the job done, laying down the law up in that top lane. But it isn't BDS winning without the damage from Mr. Crowny in the bottom lane. That's our boy, Mr. ADC, coming through with the damage. Yeah, and he had some absolutely ludicrous CS numbers throughout all three of these games. Yeah, some of them were taking 30, 40 minutes, but... SK could not execute in these late game decision making, late game team fights, and we've seen Crowny thrive in those settings time and time again. And if you've ever listened to any of the comms in BDS, it's always Crowny saying, guys, chill. Let's chill. Just just play the game. This is what we do next. Because everyone else gets a little hypey, and Crowny's always, chill, guys. I know I got a Penta, but it's not even a big deal. And I mean, that's you. That's pretty rare for the ADC to be that yeah. voice of reason in the squad right now. But that's Crowny, and he is crucial to the success for this BDS team. I think on the SK side, just to quickly touch on it, it's one of these teams that hit their max potential earlier on in the year and then didn't really, you know, build on top of that with the rest of the LEC teams finding new forms of strength, building things out, all these type of things. The rest of the league kind of caught up to SK and they weren't able to improve from that point onwards. And again, you get that combination of the layoff, the rust between the series to get to this point. And you have SK crumbling to the end of at and the end of the day. Listen, SK reaching that max potential. That max potential is much higher than anyone was anticipating for this squad. They finished better than both Koi and Vitality and absolutely nobody in their right mind would have predicted that in the preseason. This is like at the end of the, you know, football soccer match and someone's giving you an orange juice after your team's just been annihilated and you're trying to smile through it. But you have to look at the positive as SK and realize what you were able to push, how far and how high you were able to push already this LEC season, the whole year round. And you got to take that as that positive moving forward and what you can do then to tinker around, retool. How do you improve from here? That is absolutely the task of the offseason. Now, we have our four LEC teams going to Worlds. Obviously, we got to figure out the seeding, where they're going to be placed and everything. But there was other Worlds qualification on the line because it is that season. Starting in the PCS, who get two seeds. And we know who both of them are going to be. Very familiar names. They still have to play the finals to decide who uh, that top seed is going to be. But PSG Talon. Mostly familiar names, some guys returning, like Mr. Maple in that mid lane, Waco in the bot lane, guys we've seen internationally time and time again. I'm more surprised if PSG Talent is not representing at an international event. 
And I got to say, if you're one of these other teams heading towards Worlds, you got any veteran players they've ever talked to Maple before? Hey, dial him up. Dinner's on him and on TSM when you're at this event right now. Congratulations to PSG and Maple heading back to the event. This is going to be one of those fun ones because this is those teams, PSG, this type of region that you're looking at and saying in the PCS, these type of teams recently have been able to punch above the expected weight level for the, what they've been able to do. And with Maple, the rest of the crew looking good at this event, you better believe you're going to get some believers coming through talking about what the PCS can bring to the table. Especially you look at last year's Worlds, one of the other squads, people laughed at the name Flying Oysters, but... They did some damage to North America, of course, and what an insane Game 5 they played against Beyond to clinch this world spot. And by the way, honorable shoutouts to Beyond Gaming. They lose Game 5 in the upper bracket finals to PSG, then a heartbreaking, almost heroic base defense Game 5 loss to uh, the Flying Oysters, so they are denied a shot at the World Championship, but heartbreak for them. But the Flying Oysters, we get them back. Oh, the Oysters. Yes, it is a little bit of that heartbreak still to get through when you're looking at Beyond, but the Oysters rise up and they capture that last spot in the PCS, a team that did absolutely throw wrenches into plans of everybody, mainly North America at any point. Last time they were at Worlds, can't wait to bring them back this year. VCS side of things, it was a dominant Game 5 win for GAM Esports to get to the finals. Again, seeding needs to be decided, but it's the core. The top side of the map, still the same. Kiaya, Levi in the jungle, Caddy in the mid lane. Just the bot lane changing from when we saw this team last internationally. It's Slater and Pallet, who is a guy we've seen for years on multiple teams in the VCS. But always and never will I ever discount the VCS and the Marines specifically at Worlds, even if last year we're not, you know, feeling as high up on them internationally. Don't worry, I got the costume store on speed dial for my clown makeup and getup that I'll put on. <laughs> After being a believer for again, for GAM, I will always believe in these guys when they are getting to these type of events. I'm betting on it again, even with the changes, as you mentioned, because to me, that core power is still there. I'm betting on it happening this time. It might never happen, but I'm going to always be that Gigabyte Marine supporter. And obviously, we're going to see with this new Swiss format, but I feel like these kind of crazy teams with the wild play style, you got much more potential for this upset when it's winning one or two games as opposed to the traditional group stage we're used to. Yeah, you better believe there's going to be some heat, some cheese being brought over. For the event can't wait to see that in the swiss style format gigabyte marines kiaya dominating in that top side mr levi coming through in the jungle yes sir i want to be seeing some of that up there on the world stage and then of course lastly rainbow seven also clinched spot from the latin american scene this is the squad we saw at msi it was a clean 3-0 out of them obviously going to be big underdogs in this new format but again we don't sleep on any region you never know you never know. There's always going to be a way in these playing type of format. This is Worlds. We've got them. We're locking in our teams. It's that time of year. Buckle up, folks. It's only going to get better from here. We're going to, you know, obviously there's still a few more teams that need to clinch their spot, but we're inching ever closer to being able to finally do all these full previews and rankings ahead of this. Again, brand new format for this World Championship that we're going to have to break down and maybe we'll change what your predictions or how you think this event is going to play out. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thanks for watching, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.